And welcome to episode two of the Lanya podcast. I am your host, John, sitting here with my dad, who was not on the Father's Day podcast, the initial one, but uh, happy Father's Day anyways. And I was trying to get a guest in, trying to figure out what I was going to do. It wasn't imperative that I have a, a podcast the very next week. So I was just kind of sitting and waiting, trying to come up with different topics, and one just totally fell into our lap this past week, and the last couple of days we've been having a big discussion on Facebook. It started with one post that was slightly about the topic, but more about something else, and then it just evolved. So we're going to talk about the whole immigration fiasco that's that's been going on this past week but you can go ahead and introduce yourself uh to the audience hi i'm joe Fontenot, john's dad and uh glad to be here all right so we're gonna talk uh, more about the immigration deal that is has been a a huge controversy i guess i'll start with talking about what my post was about uh, I, I was listening to uh, the immigration debate, the whole discussion, but I really didn't want to talk about that. What I wanted to do was I, I seen an article, and let me rephrase that. It wasn't an article. It was not an article. It was a piece of news, and it was being shared by other news organizations, entertainment news organizations, bloggers, but the original piece is supposed to be a news story. And everybody will admit, nowadays, the media is biased. But this isn't supposed to be media. This is the Associated Press. Now, this is supposed to be as hard news as it gets. It's just supposed to be simple news. And I read this, this piece, and basically... It talks about children who were not separated from their parents. They, it was children who came across the border on their own. And what happened is they got picked up and then they alleged abuse. Now, the alleged abuse occurred back in 2013, 2014, during those years, during the Obama administration. This is a 20-something-plus paragraph news piece. And throughout it, especially in the first paragraph, you can go and look it up. This happened in Virginia. So you look up abused uh, you know, kids, Virginia, immigrants, you type in those, you'll find it. When you read the first three paragraphs... The name Trump appears like at least six times in a 20 plus paragraph. And then Trump, as in the Trump administration, appears even more than that. Trump said this, Trump said that, blah, 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 blah. And it's all framing this whole immigration thing and the Trump administration. And they tell you about all these alleged abuses and they go into detail. And 19 paragraphs in, count them, 19 paragraphs in. For only about a sentence or two, do they actually come out and say the alleged abuse occurred in 2014? And then they move on again and start talking about Trump and the administration again. So nowhere in this entire article is it mentioned, do you see the name Obama or the Obama administration? Nowhere in the entire article. So the way it reads, it, is, it reads that this is something that happened during the Trump administration. Now, they're not lying. They didn't say it did, but it's a deceptive practice. And it's a purpose, purposely deceptive practice that they did this. And this isn't just bias. There's a reason for it. This isn't just somebody that was biased that wrote it. This was somebody that intentionally wanted to push and sway public opinion. This was a, a scheme piece. It was done on purpose. You can't dispute it. It shouldn't, I mean, if you would read it. So anyways, I posted that on Facebook. And Lord, did that just erupt. 
erupt. Uh, and basically, the way I framed it was your, your news is lying to you without telling lies. Because nowhere in there did they lie. It was factual. It's just how they presented it. Right. And then the first response I get to that is one of my best friends. And his response was just crazy. Super emotional, but it was on the lines of, oh, you're taking this all wrong. It's uh, horrible what they're doing to these kids, separating the families. It's, it's disgusting. I can't believe. Uh, I'm disappointed in you that you would defend that practice. And my first response to that is, what are you talking about? Did you actually read what I post? Because if you read it, I'm not talking anything about the practices at all. I'm telling you, this article was written. And, and then his response was, yeah, yeah, it's bi- their news media is a bias. So what? Well, I'm te- <laughs> and, and then so I tell him, eventually this discussion goes in the long run. They're doing it on purpose. And this is a, a scheme by the Democratic Party. And his, his response to that was, oh, it's, that's just a conspiracy theory. So he admits news media bias, and then, oh, it's just a conspiracy theory. And then things just took off from there. You even joined in on the thread. And I guess it will... will so that's basically how it began, and we're going to delve into the discussion. Again, if, if somebody's been living under a rock, they don't know what we're talking about Illegal immigrants, illegal aliens come across the border into the United States. They bring kids with them. Sometimes it's not even their kids. Um, and they have, they either get deported or they can choose to seek asylum. Now, if they choose to seek asylum, they have to be detained and wait. They can't just release them because they say, they'll say, I want to seek asylum. Then they'll, if they just release them, then okay, there's no track of them. They'll never come back and then they can go do whatever. No, that's not, you can't do that. So they have to hold them. And the law says, back in the Clinton administration, late 90s, it was determined that it was inhumane to hold the children. Let's go back and graduate high school. I got a GED. No way, shape, or form. Was I even remotely great in English? But in my 56 years of experience in reading things, the article should have said alleged abuse in 19, uh, 2014, right? It, 2014. Yep, should have been somewhere right from the get go in, the, in title. the title. At least one of the first few sentences in the first paragraph. Exactly. So that's my opinion on that. I mean, to me, that proves that they were trying to deceive people because a lot of people, including myself, probably mostly myself, when I'm reading articles, I, I kind of skip over a lot. I try mm-hmm. to get to the point. Mm-hmm. And by doing that, what I'm going to do, if, if I hurry up and just read it like I normally do, then I'm thinking well, this is happening now and in the Trump administration. And that's what they wanted you to think. Exactly. So that's my opinion on this article. And it was obvious. Right. It was, it was obvious. And I actually had somebody who didn't contribute to the conversation, but it's somebody that works in broadcasting, that went to the same school I went to and graduated in broadcasting just like I did, and liked each one of the comments that talked about that didn't like anything else in the discussion about the whole immigration topic, but just the part about the article being biased went ahead and liked it because they knew. And I, like and I said, bias, and that's the wrong way to put it. It's not bias. It's a political scheme. This is, a, this is not – it is trying to influence opinion. But it's, it's done on purpose. And I'll tell you the end goal later on in this podcast. But back to the, the immigration topic. So what happened here, so my friend accused me of, uh, of not caring and defending the policy. And I went on to say, okay, look, I'm explaining the situation. Uh, what happens is it, it turns into a catch-22. 
Because if you can't separate families and you can't detain the children with the parents longer than 20 days, then you can't detain the parents. Right? So what's the answer? Well, just let them all free. Well, you can't do that. Well, you can deport them, but they're trying to seek asylum. But So you have to hold them. It's a catch-22, which brings up a, a problem, and we'll get to that. It's an intentional... They, know, they knew it was going to be a catch-22. That's why they brought it up. Uh, but then you have people saying, well, the administration is allowing it to go on. Trump is allowing it to go on. Oh, really? Is that why he signed the, the executive order? I'm not, so, so if I were defending, I wasn't defending. If I was defending Trump, then I'm not defending the policy because he's trying to change the policy. The administration's trying to change the policy, and Trump's been trying to change the immigration policy since before he's even been in office. Right. That's been part of his campaign thing, and the Democrats haven't wanted to work with him. Now, they might not agree on the same kind of changes, but his thing is slow down. If you slow down illegal immigration, then you have less children being separated from their families, period. Right. And his, his goal was to slow it down. But that's not the point. The point was, I wanted to talk about the discussion. I want to say, hey, let's break it down. Let's talk about the options. What do you suggest? What do you think? And because I wasn't being overly emotional about it, I was suddenly defending the policy. Because I wanted to talk about the politics, and they just wanted to whine about it. And that's the only way you could talk about it. And it's weird, because that's how the society is going. It's only social, socially appropriate to talk about it if what you're doing is whining, if you're crying about it, you're showing your emotions. But if you actually want to delve into d- deeper into it, look beyond the surface. No, you can't talk about that. You can't analyze it. You can only be upset in, in, social, uh, in a social environment. You can only be upset about it. Anything else, and you're either defending it, you're looking too deep in it. You can only, I don't understand why people feel that way. No opinions on that. <laughs> well, I, I mean, it it just goes back, I guess, to every individual that's not stopping to listen what the other person's saying before you really and and study what they're saying before you make a comment because you hearing one thing and they're saying it's totally different thing. And 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 that's the only the way communi- communications work is you have to totally understand with the other person before you can make a comment. And it's just not understanding, you know, thinking that they're going one way, and so you want to you think they're wrong going that way, and that's not what they're doing. Like it's just that's what I felt exactly like it was like they were arguing against stuff i never said it's like they totally skipped over everything i typed they had already made up in their heads what i was what i said and so they were arguing against me with stuff that i never said and not even they didn't even address a lot of the things that i had typed right which which was okay the catch-22 thing now when i say okay you can't you can't detain the kids with the parents and you can't separate families so that means you can't detain the parents either which means let them run free that's what the democrats want they want open borders does that mean i'm defending the policy now does that mean is that a justification well you can't do that so what they're doing right now is the right thing i never said so what they're doing right now is the proper thing to do or that it shouldn't be looked at i'm just telling you you can't do the other things i'm telling you why it doesn't work right Once, let's pause this. I'll come back to it. Wait, the cat litter is full of ants? Cabinet. The snack cabinet is full of ants, and I've been throwing, and they keep coming. Black. As fast as I'm throwing. Black them, ants? Ants. Black ones? Yeah, full of sugar ants. That's sugar ants. I threw all that gingerbread cookie, whatever. That was yeah, that was that's deep ants. in there. I have some stuff. I need to spray inside the cabinets. I have some yes, stuff that'll cool. knock that out so quick. Well, I'm supposed to spray in August, and 
Um, this is all going to go in the podcast. Why not? I don't care. I'm not, I don't have to edit this out. <laughs> it's, it, I mean, what's the point? It's entertaining. It's a topic. And Luke's going to come uh, hang in here for a little while. And it doesn't surprise me. We've got some old... Uh, I've just been told we've got some... We got some old expired like snacks and stuff, cookies, in the back end of a cabinet, and the ants found it. It happens. Uh, I have some incredible stuff to spray for that, but I really haven't sprayed around those cabinets, and I don't know. And it's, I'm supposed to spray again in, in August, and it is the end of June, about to be July. So it's around, you know, the residual has worn off. It's, it's time to spray again. So yeah. that doesn't surprise me at all. And I'm telling you, this, this will be another podcast, but that, that stuff that I spray is really good. Once you get it established, it has a, like a six-month residual, so you spray twice a year, you will save hundreds of dollars, hundreds of dollars. No smell, and look, I'll promote that product, especially if they would give me money to promote it, but I, I'll talk about that in another podcast. Getting back to the, what this was, um, this topic People not really me explaining things got interpreted as justification for the current policy, which is not what's going on at all. And I think people's reading comprehension. I think social media ruined that people are just not reading what other people were saying. They're not comprehending it. So anyways, there's a catch-22 there, and I, I mentioned that, that the Democrats want this. They, I got called, this got called a conspiracy theory, and I'm going to break it down here. We all know Democrats play identity politics. By the way, this is not a Republican-centered podcast, whatever. It, I'm just... I'm the, registered Democrat voter. <laughs> the... The Democrats play identity politics. Yes. We know this. It's not... We know they would like to change the demographics in this country. That's a little bit more out there. That's a little bit more of a theory. You might want to roll your eyes at that. If you want to roll your eyes, fine. Just hear me out. We know the minorities will vote more for Democrats. Look, the Republicans gerrymander their districts all the time to change... The voting demographic. Right. They redraw the, the district lines all the time. So, look, I'm going to blame the Republicans for it, too. The Democrats want to do the same thing. Instead of gerrymandering, they're in favor of immigration. They want more people to tell them the world has done them wrong and blah, 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 and, and get them on government assist, the government teat, so to speak. Yes. So, so we know that, and they want to change the demographic so what they do is they want to bring they're, they're all for immigration, illegal immigration, whatever whatever it has to be to change the demographic. So the, we know this has been going on for 20 years. And again, let me preface this by saying I'm not justifying it. Saying that it's been going on for 20 years or more. This policy. I'm not well, saying that it's okay. During the Bo- Obama election, the last one for sure. They came across and after the election and said, I don't remember the, the stats or the, but there was dead people that voted. Yeah. Well, no. They, and they, and, and that they, wasn't a conspiracy fact. They, they did find these. No, well, and the Trump administration and wanted to vote for Republicans. Well, what happened was the Trump administration wanted to look into it and they uh, they formed a committee and they went to state by state and they said, give us your uh, voter roll. And the state sued and and they said, no, that's illegal. You can't look at that. That's people's private information. We're trying to keep it public because they want to keep that stuff going. Right. I mean, it, it's it's a political game. They, they're not trying to. Uh, People's private information. The government wants the, the names and addresses and the, the birth dates to see if they're still alive. There's no other. There's no other information there, really. And whether you're registered Republican or Democrat, well, that's basic information. They're not getting anything more than that. They just don't want them to know that they have a bunch of voters that are dead that keep voting. Right. And, and voting in multiple places uh, instead of just one time in their one district. And I'd like to know how many that have felonies that vote. 
whether they go any party they vote for, it doesn't matter. If you have a felony, you're not supposed to vote. You're not supposed to. Now they are. There's a movement to change that. I know. And who's bringing it up? Yeah. Well, <laughs> we all know it's all about changing the voting demographic. And I'm not, we're not going to get into the prison population because we can get into that. We're going to, in, in this podcast, we're going to talk about the, the interesting subjects like uh, police brutality and, and how corrupt is it really and how much is misinterpretation. And we'll, we'll delve into those topics. Back to the immigration issue. Uh, where was I on that? I was, oh, the Democrats. So th- we know the Democrats want to change uh, the voting demographic. So they're all about getting immigrants to come in. We know this has been going on for 20 plus years. And there's the government, both Republicans and Democrats, have done little things here and there to try and change it. Uh, But there's legal issues. But when when there is... (laughs) That was a bit distracting. Um, Okay, so... Again, anarchy came up. Right. And as I look back on it as anarchy, I, I, you know, I, I mean, I'm not too sure on all of it, but they don't want to be laws and they don't, they want their own to do what they want to do. We don't want no law. We don't need no law. But then somebody robs them or they want, oh, wait a minute. That's against the law. You can't do that. Wait. You can't have both. Want to call the cop? Okay. We're going to go because this is what we own. If there's a law set up, you follow the law, we wouldn't have the problems we're having now. But everybody wants to do their own thing. Well, I want to go against the law. Then when you go against get catch 22. If you, you know what the law is, you break the law, but there's a lot of good cops that get bad raps. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, the situation now, when you're a good cop, you go up there and you want to well, or- teach them to hate the badge. Somebody does them wrong. They see a cop walking well. He's just going to do me wrong worse. So you, if you teach them to hate, mm-hmm. there won't be any help because they won't go to get the help. But I, that's what I'm saying. It, it's like, like I said, I call it anarchy hypocrites because... You don't. You want the law. Can't have it both ways. Right. That's my opinion. Should them criminals for coming across the border illegally in certain situations where they can't do the legal process because maybe their government doesn't allow them or they're too ignorant and i don't mean that in a bad way but look they're not they're coming from like donald trump calls them shithole countries they're not very well educated they may not even know any better that there's a proper way of doing things and they're just taking their family and they're just trying to get the fuck out and and they just want to come here for a better life should we really consider those people criminals and say well in the united states you get you go to jail they you can't take your kids with you. Your kids, you have to go to the okay. grandparent or they eventually get orphaned. Can, you know, should we really consider them criminals? What do we do to address that issue? How do you treat them? Well, number one, we have to detain them. Okay. Because we don't know anything about them. We don't know their background. Right. Okay. I'm and not a lot saying, of them can't communicate. I don't mean to cut you I'm off, not, but a lot of them can't even communicate. Right. That. I'm not saying you have to put them like in Angola, to where you have to break rocks or whatever, mm-hmm. or hard labor. I'm not saying you have to make them do anything. Try to find out information about them, mm-hmm. okay? Are they uh, uh, from another country? Are they uh, uh, running drugs? Did they get busted in another country for smuggling mm-hmm. weapons or drugs? Mm-hmm. Uh, do a health checkup. Do they have any type disease? Because these... Three, these countries, they have diseases that we don't have in the U.S. They don't have a proper medical Medi- care. Medication or nothing. But we don't want an ec- epidemic here. Mm-hmm. So they have to be detained. I'm not saying they have to separate the kids. But some kind of way we have to detain them. But we can't open uh, for the whole world. In other words, 
we have to ha we can have a detaining uh, center to where maybe we can hold let's say seven thousand. Okay, well we we have to send them back when they, when this is full. Some kind of way you have to turn them around mm -hmm. until you process this these seven thousand or whatever the the number is. Oh well, just we seen the other day that. The uh, Pentagon has uh, moved over 200,000 kids, just the kids, to military bases. So that's just the kids, over 200,000 kids, and that's just right now. That's not even in the span of hope. We're talking in a year, eight, nine, maybe north of uh, uh, 10 million yeah, I mean, people I, for and months and that, months at and, a time. And, and if you let... You start letting everybody through, it, 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 it's going to be, I mean, we won't be able to control it. No, it's overpopulation is a serious thing, So, and we can talk about that right. later. And, and, but and that, but I'm, I'm, where I'm at, I'm at right now is the biggest issues that concern us now. I mean, overpopulation might concern us in 20 years. 20, okay. 30 years, yeah. But the, 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 concern, the things that concern us now, okay, is the... The criminal background, the uh, health background. I mean, that's like I look at it like someone in my home. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to welcome anybody in my home, but if I don't have any background on you, I don't know if you're a child rapist. I don't know uh, if you smuggle drugs, if you do, if you smuggle weapons, you know. To wel welcome somebody in your house, you need to have a background on them. You know, I mean, I have friends that come over, spend the night, but I grew up with these people. It's not like I'm opening the door and find somebody on the street and say, hey, why don't you come spend a few days? We don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Well, and so we can't do that with our country. That's an interesting point that you bring up because I would like to know how many of those people that are – in the more extreme, that do favor open border uh, policies and don't even care about the whole processing thing. And they're like, no, just, just let them go. Just let them go. How many of them, if we do, instead of holding them in the, in the detaining centers, which are basically like prisons, instead of holding them there, how many of them are willing to let these people in their house and live in their house until the asylum process is going through and they become citizens. How many of those people are willing to open up their doors? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, bet you that changes things a whole hell of a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if, if, if there's enough people, hey, we got a solution. Yeah. You're, you're, you yeah. know, your heart's bleeding that much? Take in that family. Yeah. Do it. And, and you know what? Hopefully, you'll be blessed for it and hopefully, there'll be good people. But it's, if you're willing to take the chance, not knowing anybody, that's up to you. And we're not, and again, like we said at the beginning, explaining doesn't mean justifying. We're not saying, look, no. it's heartbreaking. Uh, a person who had no ill intentions whatsoever would lose their child for, for life. I mean, you lost that child. Right. That's, it's awful. And they may have not even known that what they were doing was illegal. And so, yes, there's a humanitarian issue. We're not trying to gloss no. over that by any means. It's just, like you said, you can either deport them, just turn them back around, and say, come back when you're paid. See, this is, this is kind of my solution with the deal. Deport them, but stay in contact with them. If we can't hold them here. Well, maybe hold, say, hold them a couple of weeks, teach them the proper way Send them back, and like you say, keep in touch with them to where they can, and they can do it. But they right. just they don't stay in this country because I don't think we're, we have adequate facilities to keep them to process. Obviously, we're not doing it right since we have this big uproar. So I don't think we're we're we've got the adequate facilities. You know, uh, Tyler said in the in the discussion. Well, why don't we put a build some billion-dollar facilities. Instead of spending the billions of dollars on the wall, why don't we spend the billions of dollars on, these, on facilities to, to process these people? Well, did they start on the wall yet? No, they don't have the billions of dollars for the wall. That's the whole problem. They don't have it, and nobody wants to give it. So 
will the public later say, yeah, we'll, we won't pay for a wall, but we will pay for facilities to process these people? Maybe so. Maybe that's a good solution. For now, we don't have adequate facilities. <clears throat> We don't. It's obvious. That's why we have this controversy. Our prisons are overpopulated. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, and so send them back, and but do allow them to do the asylum process. Here's the big, and, and that's, that's what I favor. Here's the problem with that, though. The, the deporting, and, and you stay on that side of the border until you got your papers, and we'll help you out. The problem is Mexico doesn't want them. Mexico doesn't want them either. Well, and, and this is just Mexico, but some countries, if they left their country and they are shipped back, they will be killed. Yeah. Be, they will be deheaded or whatever the way they, they do it, but they will be. So that, you have to look at that too. I mean, you know, I admire these families wanting the best for their family. Cause Absolutely. I certainly want the best for my family, my kids, and... Our ancestors you know did. Our ancestors came here. If we had a shithole country, I, I'm not saying I wouldn't be one to get the be fuck hopping out. a boat and with my family and trying to get out too. But you got to know, you got to try to follow the process. And the process, right now, it may, whoever likes it or don't like it, it may be good, it may not be good, but it's the only thing we have right now until we have a different solution our audio i have a feeling that this is still recording but if not again i apologize if it's choppy and, and you miss out the end result's gonna have to be the end result i should have restarted my computer and got it up good to go before i started recording this so apologies but i have a feeling it's gonna be all right um and and if it turns out to be totally shitty and you can't follow it maybe in another couple of weeks, we'll, we'll attack this subject again and, and try to explain ourselves a little better. So the, let me get back to the point of all this. This has been going on 20 plus years, whatever. And they've tried to do things. The government has failed in some areas. They did make some changes. But there wasn't a big public uproar about it. Uh, obviously, there wasn't social media 20 years ago. But it ain't all just social media. No. All of a sudden, this became a huge controversy, and it was all over the place. Like turning on a light switch, everybody was covering it. It was all over the internet. It was on every channel in the media. It was in every publication. All of a sudden... It, it, it just became a thing. All of a sudden, people started caring about it, or people, it, it got put in the public's eye. It was, it's a campaign. It is a political campaign. The whole point... Here we go. I'm going to break it down for you right now. The whole point of this was to get the public in an uproar about it. The Democrats, had, they control the media. They have the campaign. They did this to get the public upset about it, to force Donald Trump to do something, because they knew Donald Trump would sign an executive order. Here's the deal. All he did was, what? Well, you're slowing us down. But Trump just signed it because he got pressure put on him. That was the whole, but they knew it was going to get shut down because this was already been established in the court. But that's what they wanted. They wanted Trump to sign this thing. It was already, it was, it was here. It was already written for him. It was like, here, just sign this. And he did because he didn't, he didn't know the game that they were playing. The point was to get him to sign that. And then so the ACLU was a leftist organization. We know that. It was about, uh, you know, protecting people, but now it's just totally political. So uh, they, they've gone a, way, way too far with things. So... They knew as soon as he would sign it, they were going to come back and sue and shut it down and say, no, the law says you can't. Because the whole point is you can't break up the families. You can't detain the kids with the parents. So that means you can't detain the parents. So let them all go free. That's what they want. And the Democrats want an open border policy now. That's 100% part of the platform. No arguing about it. They want an open border po policy so they can change the voting demographic. Now, 
Midterms are coming up. And Trump presidency, the latest poll numbers, he's actually starting to do pretty good. He started off pretty low, and they've been climbing, especially recently. Well, what are they going to run on in the fall against Trump? What are they going to run on? The economy? They sure as hell can't run on the economy. The economy is kicking ass. Well, Trump was the president... I don't know if there's been any president in the last 50 plus years who focused on immigration as much as he did. It was a huge topic, and it's a topic that divided a lot of people because Trump said some dumb things. But for the most part, his words got taken out of context. I don't think a lot of the things he said was really racist. I think they just spun him that way because he didn't say all people. You know, if somebody if Trump says They're not sending us the good guys. They're sending us some bad guys. He's not talking about 100%. He's not saying every person that they send is bad. But that's how people take it. They just want to jump and and straw man the the argument. But obviously, that's not what he's saying. And he's he's a normal talker. He's not a a real politician or a lawyer. So he's not going to preface by saying every not every single person. He's not going to say that every time he talks. He's not going to clarify that. So they're doing this as a ploy to help them out on the immigration topic, and they're going to run on this hard in the fall. Just wait. The campaigns are coming. They're going to run on this hard in the fall, and they're going to try to pin all this on the Trump administration and and how they're going to buy Now, look, the Republicans in the Trump administration are trying right now to do things, and the Democrats aren't even showing up to the meetings. They're inviting them. They're inviting them to say, let's work on this. The Democrats, are not, they don't want to. They, want, they don't want this to be solved right now. If they solve it, then they've got nothing to run on. They want this in the public's eye. They're going to tear-jerking people and squeezing all the tears out of, that they, out of the American people that they can so they can use this as political fodder in the fall. That is the entire point. Okay. For that, I got called a conspiracy theorist. Well... Let me, okay. <laughs> Conspiracy. Theories. Well, no, ju- no. The Democrats <laughs> just care about families. That's all it is. They just okay. care about families. There's nothing. They have nothing to gain there. There's nothing above, uh, beyond the surface. <laughs> Them. Everybody that comments on this, do you know the president that put this? Pop- Late night well, with Janet Reno and but, and the the Ilion Gonzalez right. controversy. But how many of the news medias will mention this? Not very many. No, because they want you to believe this is Trump's policy. Trump's, but Trump did do something. The administration did do something, and we'll, I'll, I'll tip the hat to the, the leftists this time. What they did was they decided they were going to go with the zero tolerance party. They were going to enforce the law 100% of the time. But the law was still the law. It never changed. They just decided they were actually going to tell the border. So, But it's still not, <laughs> it's not as policy. Now... I don't know. This this broadcast has has kind of been out there. The end result is going to be the end result. I hope this has been followable. I hope it didn't get too choppy and we missed too many things. Need something online where somebody had a solution for this. In the long run, it may actually be the best solution, and that is either. Or by sword, but the United States basically take over Mexico and the rest of South and turn those countries into states and Medicare. We convert them all to citizens. We'll do a census and, Mm. and, you know, well. We got to worry about our cartels over here. Yeah. Because <laughs> we have some. But then we turn those, those shithole co- part of our, our country now. Say, hey, let's do this diplomatically. We don't even have to fight a war. Just, <laughs> yeah, right. Like that'll ever happen. I, I don't think that'll happen. But you never know. Uh, it's, if that happened well, without well, any bloodshed, if they were just hand over their, their country, maybe the people in power are now governors instead. But we're talking. I mean, Wouldn't that be a, a a great solution? Yeah, it would be if we if it could actually happen. But we're talking only traffic of illegal aliens entering the country actually comes from Honduras. 
Oh, uh, they're the Lord. Years ago, when I worked offshore, I worked with a little guy from Honduras. That uh, he came here, he he got legal and all that. I mean, really, really good guy. And that's what I'm saying. There's good people out there. Absolutely. There are, but we have to weed them out. Like I said, we can. If you have open borders, how many would actually open their house and just say anybody off the street is welcome? Well, and then you you have to give them a social security number. When when my kids were born. It took a while before I got a thing in the mail with their social security number. I mean, I just didn't get that right away in the hospital. They didn't just hand me the social security number in the hospital. I had to get that in the mail. You know, it, it, it's a process. It takes a while. They have to put you through. And we're not just talking a few thousand people. We're talking tens of millions each and every year. And when it comes, eventually, eventually there has to be a limit. You can't just let in and everybody out because the numbers won't work. Look up any articles about overpopulation, any studies about overpopulation. It, the, food, the first thing to go is natural resources. Just think about this, people. Where, do, where are these people going to live? You need more property for people to live. You have to cut down more trees. So that's, that's less trees. The environmentalists hate that. You have to cut down more trees. Uh, you run out of space. You have to cut out more of the farmland, you lose more farmland, that's less to rotate the crops. The topsoil is already getting depleted. Um, by the way, tilling is actually not a good thing. for the, Tilling destroys the topsoil. You know, it, it's easier to plant, but it actually, tilling actually destroys the topsoil yeah. because you need uh, the, the organic material in there to stay together. It helps the plants grow better. But anyways, that's, <laughs> that's another thing because I'm getting on the agricultural part. What happens... What happens um, in cities like San Francisco and Los Angeles, where everybody's stacked on top of each other, there's so many vehicles, you got a smog problem. It creates an environment. We're, we're talking about, now, the global warming thing, I'm not totally on board with that. Uh, I, I think the sun, solar flares, and all that have a whole lot to do with that. But the point is, a lot of these people on the left that are so open borders about it, they're still, they are very much... Uh, Climate change, global warming people, they believe in the same thing. Well, if you think that's a problem, what do you think is going to happen when a bunch of people all in one concentrated area are driving way more vehicles on the road? Wouldn't it be better to spread out the carbon footprint throughout the world and evenly disperse it or have it all in one big concentrated area? You, if that is true, what they're saying about carbon dioxide, which isn't a pollutant, maybe in large quantities it is. That's what they're trying to claim. Well, it's going to be in a large concentrated quality. It will destroy the ozone layer in one area, and that's directly over the country. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. So it, you have a ton of environmental issues and a ton of economic issues. You have to control how many. Now, what's the magic number? I don't know. But we have a, economists. There's a reason why people have that profession. So there, you have people. We have to control how many people we let in each year. Well, uh, I have... And it, it, it may it may be a shitty solution, but you know how in most countries we have a U.S. embassy. Mm -hmm. Why can't we set up a place in these countries, Mexico, wherever, Guatemala, whatever, and have a processing center where they can start their process to come over to the United States if they want to be a U.S. citizen? Get the get the paperwork done over there. Get the process started. When you're close enough, let them come over. And, and there may be some like that uh, in some areas. And I think, yeah, I think that's a wonderful idea. And let's work for more of those. Right. I, I think some of those exist. Let's, let's make well, more let's of those. Let's make more of them, a bigger. The I problem mean, is some of those countries don't want. Well, and, and I understand that, that part. And so what's the solution to that? Just say, uh, okay, how about we bitch slap them? How about we just bitch slap those other countries and say, yeah. look what you're doing to your people. We're going to give you a nice, firm bitch slap, and you're going to create a place so these people can get or the fuck out. Or these people need to vote them out. Some of them weren't allowed to vote. 
Well, that's true. Shithole countries. Well. You know, and all these people, oh, I can't believe Trump would say shithole countries. There's, there's some great people that come. It's not about the people that live in the country. That's not why he's calling them shitholes. He's calling them shitholes because they can't, they're not allowed to vote. They're, the, they're incredibly poor, and it's not these people's, people's fault. It's their leader's fault, but the country itself is a shithole. And if you criticize the leaders, they'll kill you. Yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, what, what do you call that? <laughs> It's, it's shithole countries to me. It is. I mean, it is what it is. Yeah. So the solution may actually be to to bitch slap these countries into, into letting them, or at least into letting them let people get out. But to be able to take over, you're talking about a war. You're talking about innocent people losing their lives in a war. So then you're going to have these other groups coming up and say. You're creating a war where they shouldn't Imper- have had a war. Imperialism. The United States is trying to take over the world. Exactly. So, I mean, I, I, we're just I, trying I to help know. people. You're just trying to help people. You know. it, it, but my little Bill Platt, uneducated ass, don't know <laughs> what to do. It's a very without war. Maybe you can. Trump likes to create terror force. Maybe there's some kind of way you can those processing centers. You know, it's like, you know, I wasn't. I was talking to one of your friends online, and I wasn't trying to justify child and parent. I wasn't trying to justify that. Mm-hmm. I was just trying to say, hey, let's try to do things legally. It ain't the worst thing in the world because it happens for U.S. citizens also. they coming from. And to have one ripped from your arms, I mean. Um, now, now, here's the other part of this because we we said but there are people who are doing this that do know better they do know it's against the law they do know your risk your child for doing it now but some of them think well that's okay all right i'll spend my life in in prison in the united states but and they might take my child from me but at least my child will have a better life hopefully and don't get abused uh, that that piece I, I was talking about earlier in the podcast what the alleged yes I mean, there's you had the top floor of the building's on fire you and your kids. Phew. I mean, I mean, come on, think about it. <sighs> and that's what these people may be facing, you know. Because look at this: in these third world countries, if they, their kids are maybe holding detained in the U.S. in these what they call slash cages, mm-hmm. but they're probably treated better than what they would be in their own country. In their own country. What's your shithole? Say it because it causes a controversy, but I'll that, say it. You know, you got to make that, that choice. I mean, I would hope nobody, and as a parent, you want to do whatever's best for your kid. Did you see the photo that Time Magazine put out on their cover? No. They super, they, it's, it's President Trump, a red background. They cut out President Trump. In a movie set. No, 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 no. What it is is that little girl was crying but she was actually never separated from her parents. Oh, uh-huh. Here's the story behind that. Okay. The father talked to the news media. The father did not want to go to the United States. He said no. The mother took the child anyways, despite the father's wish, told him, fuck you, we're going. Then they got busted, and they actually didn't take the little girl away from the mom. They just snapped a shot of her crying just going through the process, okay. but they didn't actually take her away. But she was never taken away from her parents. Well, but, that, but that's the photo they use, and they put Trump on it as if this is Trump's problem, as if it's his problem. The man's trying to solve it. This was never his problem. He didn't create this, uh, although I'm not trying to defend him either. Look, that's not the point. I'm just saying your point, what I'm saying is, I don't care if it's Trump or anybody else. They're pointing the finger at the wrong person. Stop pointing fingers to begin with. Stop pointing fingers and let's get this solved. Didn't they take a picture from a movie set? Maybe the picture of Trump was from the movie set. No, The little girl was was legitimate. But but this uh, is a kid. No, I'm thinking back. It's a kid in a cage. Oh, yeah. No, no. What happened with that one was it was a kid in a cage and he was he was crying. Right. This was actually part of a protest against the illegal immigration camps or whatever. 
These were volunteers that got on stage. They put their kids on the cage and they made their kids oh, cry okay. intentionally because they were trying to uh, show what goes on. But it was a demonstration and they snapped a picture and then they were publishing it all over the internet as if it was something that was real. Right. It was actually, it was fake. It was a demonstration right. that they were just, it was a protest that they were doing. <laughs> And you cannot trust anything that you see. You cannot trust anything. No. Nope. And and there were other pictures uh, that they did show people in cages, and they were trying to blame it on Trump and his immigration policy, which is the same policy that's been in effect for 20-something years. But the pictures turned out to be from 2014 during the Obama administration. <laughs> But they were passing it all over Twitter, and on, the, it was on the picture itself, or, or somewhere like in the captions, it said 2014, but they were like, the, the person that initiated it and posted it on Twitter said, it, look what's starting up. It said something like that. Look what's starting, or it's, it's starting up. Look, what hap- look what's happening to kids. Starting up. The picture was captioned 2014, starting up. Started up 20-something years ago. So when it started, <laughs> but that's what they're doing. I mean, that, that's, it's a campaign. It is a political campaign. Some people are getting paid to do it. Some people are, are the ones that are doing it. You know, they're, they're part of the movement that they're trying to do it. And some of them are doing it willfully without, because they don't know any better. And it's, it's, that's what they want to do because they believe in the Democrat politics and they just get influence to do it that way. So they just click share, 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 share. Oh, my God, this is terrible. Share, share, share without doing any research before they click the share button. That's that's the state of the world we're, we live in. And so we're going to start to wrap up this podcast again. Quality wise, I hope it didn't skip too much. My, I should have restarted my computer. Um we got interrupted here or there. I think that that'll make for character in the podcast. I'm not going to go through and edit any of that. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for listening. We threw some solutions out there. They might all be shitty. Uh, again, we're not trying to justify anything that's going on. We're just trying to look for solutions and, and talk a little bit about what's going on. And maybe share some information that people didn't know about. Uh, you know, you, Sometimes you just see pictures. You don't know the whole story. And we don't know the whole story either, but... We try to share what we do know. So, <laughs> we, any last words? No. Uh, like I said, just beware of your surroundings and comply whatever it is in life. Try to follow the rules. That's a, that's a good thing. You know, part of that discussion, that argument uh, that was going on, on Facebook was about whether or not you could get arrested for a parking ticket. Yeah. And I said, no, you can't. Uh, well, uh, you not can't go literally. to jail. Not arrested, no. but you can't go to jail for a parking ticket. My friend was like, yeah, you can. I almost went to jail for a parking ticket, but you didn't. It was my reply. But actually, no. The, the ticket itself does not carry a jail sentence. Now, if you don't pay it, then you start racking up fines. Eventually, uh, you're supposed to go to court and then pay the fines. And then if you don't, you get a bench warrant. You go to jail for the bench warrant, not for the parking ticket. That would, so... In other words, you go to jail for the escalation. You run a stop sign, and you eventually end up in jail. Well, it's not running the stop sign that got you in jail. It's you punching the cop in the face that got you in jail. The escalation got you in jail. That's what happened. But people like to say that. They ignore the escalation and say, oh, I went to jail just for running a stop sign. No, that's not what happened. Not what happened at all. (laughs) So anyway, so you say comply. Um, I say read. Read what people were saying. If you're going to get into a debate with them on social media, read what they said, stop, read it again, stop, read it again, then think about what they said before you type. Don't just think you know what their argument is and just start type, like skim what they said and then start type. Read what they said at least three times and try to understand what they're saying because I got into an argument with two of my best friends and they were arguing with me over stuff I never said. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we, yeah. should, well, we were t- the discussion on Facebook should have never even been an argument. We were arguing about uh, with each other about things that we weren't even saying. We should have just been. It should have just been a discussion. So it never should have been an argument. So you got to be careful on social media. Try to listen to people, folks. All right, we're gonna wrap this up. I don't know when we're gonna do the next podcast, but I tell you one thing: I will restart my computer, and I'm gonna get a lock. 
for that door. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Lon Yop Show, and, uh, and, and until we do this again, have a great one. Adios.